What's going on everybody? My name is Greg Peters. You are watching the Car Passion channel and it's a bit of a gloomy day today in San Diego so it's the perfect day to stay inside and play with our mega squirts. Today I'll be diving into the MS Pro, making a couple necessary changes for startup, wiring a couple things in the car, installing the mega squirt, hooking the laptop up, making a couple changes in Tudor Studio, making sure that it's seeing all the sensors and everything looks right, and otherwise just making sure the car seems to be safe for startup and ready to go. So with the MS Pro, you have the unit itself, you have the options plug, which is also included, as well as some pre-crimped leads, two different sizes, mind you, so pay attention to that. And it also comes with a tuning cable and vacuum line and air intake temperature sensor, which is not shown here, not uh, not involved in today's video. So the first thing I'm gonna do is open this up. I get a lot of people asking me things like, hey, how do I add a variable throttle position sensor to my car? And I say, oh, step one, you gotta open up your ECU. And they go, whoa, 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 I'm, uh, I'm not gonna open my ECU. But the Megasquare's designed to be opened up and have changes made to it. It's very simple. So you just remove the top four screws and then the guts are exposed. This is an MS Pro for a 1.6 liter. So the only changes I need to make in here are because I'm running sequential injection, I have a variable throttle position sensor, and I need the tack out signal because I'm running the LS2 ignition coils. So I'll start with the variable throttle position sensor. Now, side note for you 1.6 guys that wanna put a variable TPS on your Megasquirt powered car, this procedure is the same for you. If you just follow my wiring video uh, from a couple videos ago on how to wire up a VTPS, and then you follow this right here, this is the same for MS Pro and MS2. You've got a little set of pins, two pins, and above them it says VTPS enable. You have to install a jumper over those pins, otherwise your Mega Squirt will not be looking for a TPS signal. So I just got these jumpers right here. I couldn't find the little uh, square jumpers, so these work fine, they fit snug on the pins. So you just put it over the pins and then when you put the cover back on, the jumper just chills inside. Another jumper I need to install is the T out right next door. That stands for tack out. That tells the Mega Squared that it needs to produce a tachometer signal because for whatever reason, your factory setup is not in place. My reason is I have the LS2 coils. Those coils don't have a tachometer output but luckily the Mega Squirt does, so you can power your tack directly off Mega Squirt. And this is the same for MS2 as well. Next to the jumpers you just put in, you've got another set of pins. Now this is the same for MS Pro and MS2, and those are for your injector drivers. The 1.6 liter Mega Squirts come set up for batch fire injection, but since I'm converting to sequential, we gotta make a little change on those jumpers. You can see there is one jumper in place already, that little square box. So that just needs to change locations, and then I'll add a jumper on the other injector driver to tell Mega Squirt, hey, you need to use all four injector drivers because we're running sequential injection. Now you can see injector C and injector D. Those are your third and fourth injector drivers. First thing I'm gonna do, take that jumper off, switch it over to the injector D position on the left, and then injector C also needs a jumper. This is all laid out in the Mega Squirt instructions that are included with the ECU, but this way you guys can actually see physically what has to be done, so it might give you a little bit more confidence if you're doing this yourself. Those are the only changes I have to make inside the Mega Squirt, so now I can put the cover back on and I'll pin up some wires on the auxiliary plug. So on the MS Pro, you've got your main harness side, that's where your car's factory harness plugs in. And on the back side, you've got the options plug. The MS2 options plug does look quite a bit different from this. It's got less pins on it, but the concept is the same. Your MS will come with uh, PDF instructions. This is the pinout for the options plug. Um, obviously not using anywhere near all of the outputs. I'm just gonna be using a couple, especially for startup, but I'm gonna pin those in and we'll get started. One thing that's important to remember is a lot of these pins can be programmed by Tuner Studio to do different things. So 
Sometimes you just have to run a wire to a certain pin and then tell the Mega Squirt what to do with that pin and then it will know what to do. So the only things I'm gonna hook up on the options port are VVT, boost control, And again, you just follow the pin out that comes with your Mega Squirt. You can see here, boost control and VVT. You just match up the letters and put your wire into it. And I've got a note on each wire that's what it's gonna control and what it's called because you need both of those pieces of information when you set it up in Mega Squirt. After some research and talking to my um, Mega Squirt Wikipedia Toby with Advanced Engine Dynamics, I found out some more stuff about these front plugs. For sequential injection, the instructions do make it pretty straightforward. They tell you which cylinder needs to be hooked up to which pin. This is the uh, in your actual harness. So I'm gonna be adding two pins to the, the factory harness. So injector one and two are here, and now I'm gonna add in pins over here for injector three and four. So looking at our factory harness plug, you can see the six big slots there. The two on the right are your injector one and two, and then injector three is gonna go there. Injector four is gonna go in that upper left. And this is the same style plug as the options plug that comes with the Mega Squirt. You just gotta slide the new uh, connectors in there. They pop into place. I've already got these leads labeled. Make sure they don't get mixed up. Okay, now you've got those leads, and if you remember from a couple videos ago, I have two more wires named injector three and four coming from injectors three and four. I'm gonna solder those into these. Once you get the MS screwed to the floor, attach your factory harnesses. Then this is a vacuum line that comes from your intake manifold. Once I solder up those few connections, I'll go ahead and power up the Mega Squirt and plug my laptop in and see how things look. Remember these from a few videos ago? VVT control, injector three and four, boost control. Mm, those are all gonna run down to the Mega Squirt and solder into those leads that we just put in. Hopefully this is all starting to make a little bit more sense. Lucky for me, my car came factory with no AC, so I've got a couple nice big holes in the firewall to run my harness through. But if you do have AC, you can just drill uh, whatever size hole you need to run your wiring and then just throw a rubber grommet in there to make sure all the wiring stays safe and doesn't get cut on the firewall. We're under the lights again, my dudes. At this point, everything is wired up. Uh, so I'm gonna power up the Mega Squirt and hopefully not start a fire and make sure it sees all the sensors. We'll calibrate the TPS, change a couple settings, all of which I will show you guys in just a second. All right, well, good news is I plugged the battery in and nothing caught on fire. All my lights still work. Dude, that is so exciting just to see. I haven't seen this right here in 16 months is how long this car's been down. I'm just excited to see the lights turn on. Okay, so what I'm doing right now, I got my um, MS Pro flash drive. I'm just gonna load up the base map, then I will power on the Mega Squirt, and we'll change a couple settings around. Here is my first opening of Tuner Studio MS. We're going to create new project. Name it whatever you want. And then before you hit detect, got to power on the Mega Squirt. I haven't done it yet. I'm a little nervous. I don't know what's going to happen when I turn the key. There's one. I better be careful. I got my got my, my wideband O2 chilling here. I have no idea how hot that thing actually gets. I want to make sure it's, it's talking with uh, Mega Squirt. And detect. Okay, no controller found. So, something is up. I'm gonna figure it out and report back. Uh, four, two, six, point zero two P. Go ahead and click next. Okay, so RS-232 serial interface. Yes. Go to COM3. You know you're a, you are a, you are a magician. <laughs> no, just the guy that's, that's been in your shoes a number of times. <laughs> Alright, I'll up, drive down here, let's, let's play all night. Yeah. I'm still at the shop. 
The man is a wizard, ladies and gentlemen. If you're in SoCal and you need to get your Miata tuned, advanced engine dynamics, talk to Toby, tell him I sent you. He just knows his stuff. He's like rattling off long like firmware numbers. She just knows the stuff, okay? If you need to get your Miata tuned, Toby is the guy to see. So we got a 2001 VVT engine in a 92 chassis. The Mega Squirt is for a 1.6. And the changes I've made are, we're running sequential injection. We've got a different uh, trigger wheel. It's a Fab 9 tuning 36.2 trigger wheel. I'm still running the LS coils in Wasted Spark. So if you guys have specific questions about any of the setup like that, drop them down below in the comments. I'll get to you as I can. But what right now what I'm gonna show you is the setup in Tuner Studio that I'm gonna do before starting the engine, the changes that need to be made. First, I'm gonna set this up for my 36.2 trigger wheel. I'm gonna come up here to ignition settings, ignition options, wheel decoder, Default, for whatever reason, is a 99-05 Miata. And I need to go Miata 36.2, because that's the trigger wheel I have. So we'll do that. And per Toby, my offset needs to be zero. And then I will double check my actual ignition timing when I start the engine, or at least when I'm cranking it. So I'm gonna go ahead and burn that. Burn. And whenever it says settings change it require a power cycle to take effect, all you have to do is turn your key off. My fuel pump's going crazy because I just emptied my tank out of all that old ethanol. Turn your key back on and you're ready to go. So I don't need to change any ignition settings for um, the LS coils. Just leave my number of coils on Wasted Spark because that's how I have them wired. Just like stock 1.6 is Wasted Spark. So I'm gonna leave it like that for now and I can convert to sequential later. Now, another major thing I have to change before startup is for the injectors. Uh, stock injectors on this engine, I think are 265s and I'm running 1000 cc injectors. So I'm gonna come here to engine sequential and come up here to required fuel. 1884 cc's per minute they're 1000 cc okay it says i need a 3.2 required fuel so that'll probably be good enough for startup i'm sure i'll have to make adjustments right off the bat go ahead and burn that now i've also converted to sequential fuel injection so that's another thing i forgot in here so this needs to be fully sequential Gonna burn that. All right, I've checked to see that my throttle position sensor is working, but it needs to be calibrated. So I'm gonna come up here to tools, calibrate TPS, and for close throttle ADC count, have your foot completely lifted off throttle and hit get current. And then you're gonna put your foot all the way to the floor, get current again and accept now should be pretty close to zero and then when you floor it it should be a hundred so cycle it a couple times and then you might want to have someone also verify that your throttle is actually opening and closing all the way uh, i already did that so i know we're good to go there so the tps is now calibrated now i'll calibrate my wideband so this is an innovate mtxl i'm going to power it on Shows an E2 code, which means no sensor. That's correct because you should have your sensor disconnected for the first power up. Power it down, plug the sensor in, and it needs to be in open air, chilling on the pliers because the tip of that thing does get pretty hot. Now we're gonna power it back up. Stop calling me a hater. Oh calibrating and that's it it's calibrated and it is pegged lean in tuner studio so it's good to go i'll double check it once i fire the engine but that should be about all that's needed all right guys so if you're doing anything like this or even working with mega squirt at all hopefully this video helped you a little bit in some way um there, with mega squirt there's just a lot of little things that are 
really confusing at first until someone tells you how to do it and you're like, oh, it, it's so simple, it makes perfect sense. So hopefully you found something like that in this video. Next video, I will be starting the engine, so look forward to that within the next couple days, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace out. Back from the dead.